is about using closed Facebook groups as a communicative tool for university students. So I'll jump right in. So about me, I'm currently a university lecturer. I've been living in Japan for over six years now. Five years I spent in Shizuoka. I worked at the Board of Education where I was an ALT trainer. So I visited um, schools. I did um, training for the JTEs, um, writing entrance examinations, interviewing teachers for licensing, all of those things. Um, now, um, between jobs, I am, when I'm not working, actually, I'm doing my dissertation. I'm in the final phases with Nova Southeastern University in Florida, and I'm focusing on curriculum development and assessment. So my presentation is aimed at outlining some activities that can be performed inside a closed Facebook group to enhance students um, speaking proficiency and most specifically students um, who are first year just leaving high school. So here we have Mr. or Miss COVID, whatever we choose to call, call it. And this has really created a, a paradigm shift in terms of the way that we deliver lessons the way that we teach overall in terms of conducting instruction. And when COVID happened, um, classes were suspended for over a month. And I was thinking, what will I do? No face-to-face -face classes. How will this work? They're, they are first years. I'm teaching mainly first years. What will I do? So I had to go to the drawing board and rely on digital spaces like Facebook groups, apps like Google, um, Classroom, Zoom, video and conferencing. And I must say, um, I was scared, but I must give praises to OTJ for giving me tips. And many of these will be outlined also as I move forward. So there are many research um, conducted in terms of using social media. And one particular research that I found when I was doing this is Sharon and Cummings. And they, they believe that it, or from their research, that student engagement is increased more in courses that have official Facebook groups. So there are many benefits of using SNS. They also uh, made mention that it has no restriction um, um, through physical space or time, because we know that we can collaborate and learning can take place asynchronously, that tongue twister word. Um, so students are not only reading. When you think about Facebook, people are like, oh, it's post. Um, I have colleagues who tell me, oh, it's difficult. They're not just reading, they're doing all sorts of things online that I will explain. So the benefits of Facebook. I've been using Facebook since its inception. I think 2006, I was at university and Facebook was the talk along with MySpace and High Five. I remember those days. And so I wouldn't say I'm an expert at Facebook, but I've seen the changes over the years and I've benefited from Facebook. And I'm like, okay, why not try to use Facebook um, during the pandemic for my classes? So many, many benefits, easy to use. You don't need to be trained in using Facebook. I can create groups, I can do video calls, I can do the same thing like Zoom, I can do video chat with my students. They can upload videos, images, status updates, I can just communicate in real time. So also, I can use it for course content that we can see here. I can, um, if you look at your screen, see that I posted what we're doing for week three and I can upload PDFs, everything just like all the other LMS um, that we have out there, Facebook can be used for doing that. So the speaking course that I was in charge of teaching was a first year course in spring. And I was in charge of two classes, one at 25 and the other had 34. They were all first year students, fresh out of high school, um, enthusiastic, wanting to go to school on campus, all excited. The course lasted for 15 weeks from May to July, and all of the activities were planned to be used in the closed Facebook group. So I wanted activities that would allow students to practice, um, activities were, that were not typically 
that were done in um, face to face classes, but not have the challenges of face to face classes. I wanted students to be more fluent. I want their low level students, but I wanted them to get fluency. I wanted them to sound more natural. I wanted them to be confident because um, I know they're coming straight out of high school, a little bit shy and all of that. So I wanted activities that would get them practicing the language. So what activities did we do? Um, we did a range of activities. And at first it seemed difficult because I'm saying, okay, face-to-face -face may be impossible. So what am I going to do? But with creativity, um, Facebook can be a gem and I'll outline that. So I did modeling activity. I did a time speaking activity, not just one, but activities as the semester progressed, um, show and tell, you've got talent and the bonus, even though many may say it's not related, not speaking, but it helped a lot in terms of the speaking activities that were done. So reflective writing and every week they had to do that. So let's start with modeling. So I would post a recording about one of the units or one of the topics or themes that I covered. I would use key phrases, vocabulary. I will also post the transcript as you can see here on the right side of your screen. So the students would listen and they would practice and try to copy my intonation, my stress patterns and all of that. Then they will record themselves and compare it to the original video that I uploaded. And then they would upload their video or I ask them to do something original using the key phrases or the vocabulary. And this really worked. It helped them a lot. They, well, in their feedback, they mentioned that. Number two, so we also did many timed speaking activities. They, in their reflection weekly, they would tell me they want to know how to speak longer. Uh, they don't have the right vocabulary, they're nervous. And so based on topics that were covered um, in the class, I made a post that they should talk about. They were given sufficient preparation time. Some days, classes were on Mondays. So some days they would get, um, I tried to make it consistent. They would have until Wednesday, uh, I think I started. And sometimes because some of them messaged me and said that they had part-time jobs and they were tired. And so I extended it so that they had enough time to prepare their presentations. Um, they had to speak for the duration of the time or longer. I, I asked them, okay, surprise me, speak longer. And I would praise them. And the more I praised them, the more they made longer speeches, which I really liked. Um, I also told them to listen to other person's speeches and they had to listen for specific words. They had to listen for the phrases that were covered, the functional language in that unit. And then they had to make note of them. And that in turn would be our warm up activity when we got to class the next week. So as you can see, highlighted is four minutes. So some weeks they were asked to try to talk for four minutes or more. So I wanted to push them a little bit. Some weeks talk for at least three minutes. So it depends. Some, some week it's just one minute, depending on how I also get how they're feeling and all of that the vibe from, from the class. And they commented. So this class, I think, seen by 21 um, was a 25 class and they, they did a lot of interaction. And here we are with the interaction. So they would ask each other questions, which was really interesting. Um, for example, what club activity did you belong to in high school? What is your favorite Korean food? I belong to the, to the Japanese archery club. They would respond and they would go on and on and on. Sometimes it was over 100 comments and I'm like, wow, you guys are amazing. So here we see, um, I had students, uh, I should mention, I had students from Vietnam and they, for this, I got their permission to post the videos and the screenshots. So I got students from Vietnam, China. So Wookie is from China and um, Hang is from Vietnam. So Wookie's asking for good places and recommendations are given. And they were just interacting and getting to know each other. So we also did show and tell, and this was a big success. Um, they were asked to do a presentation on a favorite item or anything special. 
I've done this for, for high schoolers and sometimes they would just hide behind the mask and not do much or not even be that interested. But these students went all out. Um, they had to tell me the story behind their object, whether it's a, uh, inanimate or it's a pet or whatever it was. And they had to use adjectives because early on I found out that they had trouble using adjectives and the whole parts of speech. So I did all of that. I covered that ground. And so it was time for them to actually practice these things. And it was amazing. Um, here I have my hero, uh, one of my darlings in class. And uh, she, she, she was a little bit shy when we started out. And here she is showing her pet birds and giving them instructions. And it was just really interesting to watch. And the students commented and they were asking her question. Others started showing their pets. It was just amazing. And I also want to note with Facebook, I get to see them grow. I get to see their the changes. If I look at Mahiro, and this was 27 weeks ago, and look at her transform the young adult it's just so amazing and they look back too and they cover their their face and they, they're just so shocked oh that's me i've changed yes yeah, so i get to see them grow also so here is another student show and tell healthy drink um this is riku it's all about exercising and going to the gym and he's the one that the students will ask what to drink or <laughs> likely he's a professional so that's really also good to see them asking for recommendations and making suggestions and not being afraid to express themselves which is what i really want wanted another student here showing water, he drinks water a lot <laughs> from his video. It was really interesting. And, and so I get to, to know them also through these videos because it should be noted in class, their videos are off. And I don't, I don't bother them to turn on their videos because I know also that they'll post their, their fa Facebook um, videos and I'll get to see what they're like and what they look like and learn more about them. And also they're saving on data. So that's another their issue because many of them sometimes for a class they are at the train station they are at the convenience store outside sitting down somewhere and so i don't i don't push them to show their videos but um i make sure ensure that they try to upload and do the activities and so here i have ayane she's showcasing her favorite book which is written by a, a korean author and she likes to read and she's not afraid of sharing that in class. And so show and tell, always a big success when, we, when I tell them to do it for activities. Then you've got talent. This is another activity that worked really well. Um, students, the students here are so talented, far beyond how I was in high school or university. And so I asked them to perform, showcase their talents. They can sing, they can perform, they can do whatever they want. Um, another example is Mahiro. She's good at baking and she did a baking instruction and that was really cool. Um, so whatever their talent is, I push them to give a little background information before they perform and it's just amazing. Um, if time permits, as Roger says, I would probably play Rico's video. He's really into, um, I think, Justin Bieber, and he's learning to play the guitar, and he's just, every week, sometimes when it's not even show and tell, he, he gives us a little music, which is really, really nice. And then finally here, I have reflections. So I learned, this is, this is a big part of why I like Facebook. I would never get these, these answers or these things from the students. Um, they, they were just not afraid to tell me the difficulties that they were having, whether or not they were having any. Um, they could, I asked three questions. They were supposed to tell me what they learned in class, um, what was difficult and the most difficult part of class was and what they need help with. Um, I would then take this and then go to the drawing board and see how best I can fix or just next class lesson to fix some of these problems. And sometimes I miss send them message or emails and give them tips depending on what they are asking for. So let's see. So this class we talked about the media and so they weren't 
they didn't know much. And so they were asking most difficult part of class was answering questions about the radio. I don't need any help. Um, and another student here said, I need help with how to not be upset when I talk to the screen. I guess tantrums there. Um, I need help with, I thought it was necessary to understand more grammar and I asked for extra details. Um, others, I need to learn more vocabulary. And so I, I gave words. So I also use Google Classroom. And so I gave them vocabulary quizzes, anything related to the topic to build their vocabulary. So these are the reflections. They were so, so important. And then they helped me each week. I would just go through and see how best I could help them. So if you are planning to use this method, there are some things that you need to consider. Um, you have to be very clear about what you want the students to focus on in their videos on Facebook. Um, you, you have to let them know whether it's um, language point, vocabulary, grammar point, just make sure that you are clear, give clear instructions that they can follow and that they can practice and achieve speaking proficiency in whatever you want to target. Also ensure that you give them sufficient preparation time in terms of language input and thinking time, whether it's in the class or after the class, make sure that they have enough prep time. Um, as I said before, most students will tell me they apologize for being late, whether it's personal issues or not, and sorry for uploading, uploading videos late. And I would just, I appreciated that they did apologize and I'd ask them to make sure that they try to upload a little bit earlier so other students can respond to the posts. Also, you have to think about how you're going to give feedback um, on the speaking activities. Are you going to give it right away? Are you going to do a general feedback in class? Are you going to create a rubric um, to mark these activities, how you're going to do it? Here in class, because I take the train, I have the, these courses three times per week and I work at my other job three times also. So what I do on my train ride, I would respond or depending if I'm home, whenever I'm free, I, I, I respond to the students and I try to give them individual feedback. They really like that. Um, so here, Ibiki said he was nervous before he posted and I told him to take a deep breath. In class, I would do also breathing exercises with them because I know it's so difficult for them to build up the courage and to just speak, whether even if it's just in front of a camera. So they would just tell me each week how they're feeling. We had a speaking test and this was via Zoom group and they were nervous. I need help with how to speak longer and I gave tips. I had a speaking test that covers familiar topics that have been learned before, but I was very nervous. And so I, each week I would help them to build their confidence. Also, you have to think about privacy. So I told them never to give too much information. Some of them, many of them have fictitious names and they don't have to show their faces. Um, they don't have to sign up if they don't want to. I had a few students who didn't sign up. They would send me their videos and I would personally be the one responding and so forth. So it's give them the choice to choose if they want to be a part of this or not. Um, they, they, they felt good to know that it was a private room and that only members within the group could see what they post and respond to them. And that made them feel, you know, less worried about using Facebook. For, for many of them, it was the first time and I had to take them through the process of signing up and that took a while. So definite privacy. Also create rules. Facebook um, allows you to create rules or you can use some of the Facebook rules so they know that there's no bullying um, or making comments about race or religion or different cultures. They're supposed to respect each other's privacy and they're supposed to be kind and courteous. And this was displayed throughout um, the post. Um, also be prepared for questions and concerns. Um, students, as I said, who have trouble joining um, the group. How are you going to deal with that? Are you tech savvy? Do you know about Facebook and all the ins and outs yourself so that you can help them? Um, when they tell you that they have problems, how are you going to fix it? Here, 
one student was telling me that his internet is bad. And I love the fact that they could message me right away and let me know what problems they were having. So these activities that we talked about can be tailored to do different um, type, to different focuses, different skills. I use it for writing also. That's another whole other <laughs> presentation. I used it for debate and I did this, the debate presentation at JALT Q. And that was really a success. I use it for college English. So you can use it for other activities. So question and comments. Thank you so much for listening. All right, there are there are a couple of questions that were here on the uh, on the chat from uh, Marion. She says, "Do you have any issues with shy students or reluctance to share?" I guess you kind of address that since um, since Marion typed that in. Students who are like, "Since I don't want to show my face, I'm like, put it to the window." There's one student she uses her teddy bear, so the video is focused on the teddy bear, but you hear her voice, and others to the wall. I don't force them but they do want to share. Um, I remember one student telling me her daddy said no Facebook in the house. I think two students and I'm like, that's okay. You don't have to sign up. You can send me your video personally. And oh, okay. I will watch and send questions, yes. Uh, the uh, uh, Another part of Marion's question was, have these students met face-to-face -face in the classroom, never, offline? Never, never. Marian, never. <clears throat> I went on campus and one saw me and I'm like, social distance. She ran and she hugged me. Yeah. <laughs> I went to do my medical. I went to do my medical in September and she ran. Sensei. And I'm like, she jumped on me. I'm like, oh, social distance. Remember? She was so happy. <laughs> that sounds Very wonderful fantastic. because I've heard so many stories of people being frustrated that they couldn't have that communication, but it sounds like you yes. set them up. I've heard me, yes. And they yeah. told me they've met friends. Um, they're not afraid to come to class and say, Sensei, I've met friends. We've met up. And I'm like, I hope you remember to social distance and all mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, they made friends. And they told me that without it, they wouldn't have been able to do it. They love it. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And I've seen a side of them that I wouldn't see in face-to-face. -face. Yeah, for sure. So I, I just get the feeling that you're giving a lot more than your job, actually, your job yes, description. I am, Erin. Yeah. I am. I am. <laughs> I'm not but, but I love teaching. I've been doing this, what, 14 years? Yeah. Taught Spanish and now English. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so even though it's not an official part of the course, you're kind of offering it as something yes. extra. Yeah, so I use Facebook, I use Zoom, and I use Google Classroom, the three of them together. And your school doesn't have any, I mean, do they have rules? Because some schools are very difficult. It's no, they allow me to, to, to help the students in whatever way, and I'm grateful for that. Wow. Yes. So for, for Zoom, I only keep them for 45 minutes. Yeah. I, I did the questionnaire at the beginning, and they told me that they have data problems or so forth. And I told them, okay, 45 minutes, not the full 90. And some classes, they text me, uh, Sensei, I'm at the train station. I won't use my video today. And they stay behind and we talk extra. But yeah, so mm -hmm. I know the ones who are having real difficulties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it, breaks my, it breaks my heart. Mm. I hope you soon get to be able to have face-to-face -face classes. Uh, with they them. are excited. They're like, they can't wait to meet me. They're going to buy me cheesecake. They're going to this. They're going to, they're just excited. That's so cool. I would love to meet them too. Mm. Great. Okay. It was Thank really you. nice to hear about your, I actually teach retirees mm -hmm. and I was interested. Well, because we're still meeting face-to-face -face, and they're pretty small numbers. And I, this is a, um, a culture center kind of class. Yeah. So I've been suggesting already that we could do something online. You know, I'm happy to use Zoom or yeah, Facebook would be fine. But it would with be the wonderful. older people, some of them are not very competent. So I've got a whole thing yeah. there. And I'm not super confident either in some of the, you know, when some of them, uh, if they're on a, on a laptop or a desktop, that's fine. Mm -hmm. but when they have issues with being on a phone that's where it gets or an me. ipad i i i'm not familiar with those and so i wouldn't know how to help them so yes. 
So basically they're holding back and yes. saying, you know, not to do that. So I, I don't know, but it looks like we might be heading into more lockdowns. So good yes, luck with so your I'm... courses. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I got to go, but thanks so much. It was very yes, interesting. Yes, it was very, very interesting. Thank you, Lebeth. It was, uh, was, that was a, a really great activity. Um, so I'd like to, to thank everybody who joined us today and um, to, to rem I hope that uh, you've had a, a nice weekend here at JALT. Uh,